Want to buy a stock that's priced the same as it was back in 2013, despite huge growth since then? Looking for a safe, growing dividend that's yielding near 5% right now? Like the idea of getting your shares at a discount? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. It helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is providing people with life-saving and life-improving treatments. Who wants to live a shorter life? Who wants a lower quality of life? Nobody, right? Well, that is why healthcare companies in general and pharmaceutical companies in particular are so appealing for long-term investment. After all, if you've got a health problem, you're going to do whatever is necessary to get treatment. Demand for these products is inelastic and growing, and that means a long runway for revenue, profit, and dividend growth. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Gilead Sciences, Inc., which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Gilead Sciences, Inc., stock ticker GILD, is a biopharmaceutical company that develops and markets therapies to treat a variety of life-threatening diseases. Founded in 1987, Gilead is now a $78 billion by market cap drug giant that employs more than 14,000 people. The company's three primary disease areas are viral diseases, inflammatory diseases, and oncology. Gilead focuses heavily on HIV and hepatitis B and C. Their HIV franchise accounted for approximately 60% of fiscal year 2021 sales. Geographically, the U.S. is by far their biggest market. The U.S. accounted for approximately 74% of fiscal year 2021 sales. Big Tarvi, which treats HIV, is their crown jewel. This single drug comprised about 32% of total fiscal year 2021 sales. Bictarvi is the most prescribed HIV treatment in the US. Gilead's biggest drug is also one of their fastest growing products. Bictarvi fiscal year 2021 sales showed 19% year over year growth. Unfortunately, Gilead's massive success in HIV has been overshadowed and undercut by their other massive success in hepatitis C. Why would massive success in one area be a bad thing? Well, Gilead became a victim of their own success. That's because they developed Savaldi, a cure for hepatitis C. When you cure people rather than simply treat them, that naturally leads to less product sales down the line. Cured people no longer need treatment. In addition, Gilead's somewhat narrow focus on HIV, which impacts a relatively small percentage of the population, limits the size of their customer pool. Gilead should undoubtedly be lauded for providing life-saving treatments to people that desperately need them. However, investors have had to be more patient with Gilead than the average pharmaceutical company. Because patience is often in short supply, the market has been unkind to the company's stock over the last several years. That said, Gilead does pay a large, growing dividend, which has made it a lot easier for its shareholders to remain patient. As it sits, Gilead has increased its dividend for eight consecutive years. The five-year dividend growth rate is at 9.1%. That's strong. However, more recent dividend increases have been in the mid-single digit range. On the flip side, the stock yields a very healthy 4.7%. You don't really need a huge growth rate when you're already getting a near 5% yield. By the way, this market smashing yield is 90 basis points higher than its own five-year average. 
With the payout ratio at 59.2%, the dividend is secure and positioned to continue growing. I think there's a lot to like about the dividend here, especially for income-oriented dividend growth investors. Looking at business growth, Gilead's revenue has increased from $9.7 billion in fiscal year 2012 to $27.3 billion in fiscal year 2021. That's a compound annual growth rate of 12.2%. That's actually rather impressive for a fairly mature pharmaceutical business. Now, it is important to point out that revenue has been, has seen a recent and temporary bump from sales of Vecluri. Vecluri is brand name Remdesivir. This broad spectrum antiviral medication has been used to treat COVID-19. Vecluri sales were up 98% for fiscal year 2021 compared to fiscal year Year 2020. Factoring out Vecluri, fiscal year 2021 revenue came in at $21.4 billion. Using that number would result in a 9.2% compound annual growth rate for revenue over the last decade, which is actually still rather impressive. Meanwhile, earnings per share moved up from $1.64 to $4.93 over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 13%. Again, we have a great 10-year result. However, again, there's a caveat. This 13% compound annual growth rate was anything but a steady secular increase in earnings per share. For instance, Gilead's earnings per share came in at a whopping $11.91 in fiscal year 2015. After a collapse in sales of their HCV miracle drug Savaldi, the company's revenue and profit had to realign and right-size themselves. If you look at things over the long term though, Gilead's track record is better than it's given credit for. Looking forward, CFRA believes that Gilead will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 2% over the next three years. That would represent a material growth slowdown for Gilead if it comes to pass. To be fair to CFRA, I think it's difficult to pin things down in Gilead's case. There's a lot of uncertainty, especially regarding the longevity of demand for Vecluri. But I also see three big things to be excited about. First, the company's biggest drug is also among its fastest growing drugs. Bictarby saw its sales grow 19% year over year for fiscal year 2021. And there's even been a growth acceleration here. Bictarby year over year sales growth came in at 22% for Q4 2021. Second, the company has broadened itself out into oncology, most notably with their recent $21 billion acquisition of Immunomedics. Key cancer drug Trodelvi, which came with the Immunomedics acquisition, received FDA approval in April 2020. This drug is expected to do $3.5 billion in annual sales by 2026. Third, Gilead's 55 clinical stage programs indicates a healthy pipeline. Many of Gilead's leading drugs enjoy patent protection through the end of the decade, giving the pipeline room to develop. Look, Gilead's stock price is the same as it was back in the summer of 2013. That's despite the fact that Gilead's revenue, net income, and free cash flow have all more than doubled since that time. And the company is generating all of that on 80% of the float. The expectations here are super, super low. I think Gilead can and likely will do better than low single digit earnings per share growth over the next few years, but even if CR R CFRA is accurate with their prediction, Gilead could still increase its dividend at a rate that's at least in line with that level. And you're getting a near 5% yield to start with. These are utility-like dividend numbers, except you get the pharmaceutical upside on top of it. Moving over to the balance sheet, the company's financial position is satisfactory. The balance sheet has deteriorated in recent years as Gilead has sought out growth through acquisitions, but the balance sheet is not poor. It's simply not quite as strong as it once was. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 1.2, while the interest coverage ratio is at over nine. Profitability is extremely robust. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 19.4% and annual return on equity of 24.8%. Despite what the market might have you believe at first glance, Gilead is actually running a great business and the company does have durable competitive advantages that include economies of scale, IP patents, R&D, and elastic demand for entrenched products and established relationships with its various partners. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. I view all three of these risks as elevated within Gilead's specific industry, a shrinking HCV market, reduced demand for Vecluri, and generic alternatives to legacy HIV drugs will threaten the company's sales base. There is integration risk with immunomedics with pressure on Trodelvi to perform. And there's pipeline risk. New blockbuster drugs must overcome slowing sales from older drugs. I think it's important to consider these risks, but Gilead could still be a terrific long-term investment. I say that because the stock's low valuation seems to be more than pricing all of that in. The stock's price earnings ratio is 12.5. That's well below the broader market's earnings multiple. We can also see that the price to cash flow ratio is at an undemanding 6.8. That's way off the stock's own five-year average price to cash flow ratio of 9.1. And the yield, as noted earlier, is significantly higher than its own five-year average. I value shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 9% discount rate to account for the high yield and a long-term dividend growth rate of 5%. 
I'm giving Gilead little benefit of the doubt here. I'm permanently building in low expectations. The payout ratio is a bit elevated and CFRE is expecting only a 2% compound annual growth rate for the company's earnings per share over the next few years. I also think there are more questions than answers around the overall drug portfolio. On the other hand, Gilead is actually running a great business when you look at the fundamentals, and with the stock price the same as it was nine years ago, even though the business is far ahead of where it was back then, I do see a disconnect between the stock and the business. It wouldn't take much for Gilead to exceed the low expectations being placed on it. But I always like to err on the side of caution. I'm especially cautious in this case. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $76.65. The reason I use the dividend discount model analysis is because the business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates Gilead as a four star stock with a fair value estimate of $81. CFRA rates Gilead as a three-star hold with a 12-month target price of $66. I came out somewhere in the middle. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $74.55, which would indicate the stock is possibly 21% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Gilead Sciences Inc. is running a great business. The stock is priced the same as it was in the summer of 2013, even though the company is far bigger and better today. With a market smashing yield near 5%, eight consecutive years of dividend increases, a comfortable payout ratio, high single digit dividend growth, and the potential that shares are 21% undervalued, long-term dividend growth investors should take a good look at this name right now. And now for a special news announcement, Qualcomm Inc. stock ticker QCOM just posted a monster Q2 report, blowing away expectations on both the top line and bottom line. They also provided upside guidance. I've covered Qualcomm a number of times here on the channel. This is a long-term winner. With the stock down 28% year to date, this earnings report could be the catalyst for a major turnaround. If you don't yet have this name in your portfolio, now would be a very good time to reconsider that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.